But I just want you to get the point here. And then it said, it says, Jesus said, to those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, he who overcomes. Every single one of the seven churches, he said the exact same thing. It's the only thing he repeats to every seven, all of the seven churches. If you have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, he's saying to you, get ready to overcome. He who has ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, he who overcomes. It's the only thing he says to every single church. Are you hearing it? Not he, may, those, may you, those who have ears to hear, hear this. God wants you to be comfortable. Not those who have ears to hear this, that you're going to be raptured into heaven before this even happens. So don't worry about it. That's not what he's saying. He's saying get ready to overcome. Now he says that to all seven of the churches. By the way, to five of them, he says repent. Isn't that interesting? Not even to all seven of them. Only five of them. Of the two that he doesn't say to repent... Both of them are the two churches that suffered persecution. Isn't that interesting? Five churches he tells to repent and they didn't suffer persecution. Two churches they suffered persecution and they didn't have to repent. Hallelujah. I'd rather be in those. Don't laugh. Say amen. amen. Say I'd rather be in those. Amen. You know I'm also telling them, you know what something else? Those two churches... Not only did they not have to repent, not only did they suffer persecution, those were the two churches that were dealing with a spiritual battle about the Jewish people. You go back and read, it's the second church and the sixth church. Smyrna and Philadelphia. And you know that when you get involved in this fight, this spiritual battle over the Jewish people, there's a fight. And there's a price to pay. And I know people in this room that have paid a price for that. Is that right, Elizabeth? There's other people. Pam. There's a lot of people here at IHOP that have paid real prices. Because this is a battle. It's a serious battle. But we want to be in on it. And yes, there's going to be persecution. But persecution also matches revival. We have seen the gospel go all over Israel the past few years. Because of our anointed preaching? Nope. Because of persecution. That's been the most successful form of evangelism we've had. We get persecuted. The media takes an interest. And they come do stories on us. They usually put me on the TV. What they do is other people get persecuted and they put me on the TV. So everybody's got their part. I mean, so I have to repent. <laughs> no. Well, actually, those of you who know what happened to us this year, I was taken to court for preaching the gospel. We had demonstrations against us. We were threatened with death. I was thrown out of a synagogue. But listen, that's what makes for the gospel going forward. I got physically thrown out of an Orthodox Jewish synagogue this year. But you know what? In order for them to throw me out, they had a meeting the week before that. They had a meeting of the synagogue leaders, and they all had to discuss whether to throw me out or not because I believed in Jesus. Hallelujah! Well, only half hallelujah because they made the wrong decision. But listen, but I'm saying, and when the persecution goes forward, the worst, you talk about the beast, the beast system, the, the, the closest thing we've had to a beast system in, in our generation has been the government of Mao Zedong in communist China. It was the worst murder of Christians in history. And at the same time it birthed the greatest revival in the history of man unto this date. And a hundred million people got saved. There is an equality between persecution and revival. Yeah, well, that's the truth anyway. All right. Yo. Um, there's two ways of interpreting that white horse coming out. It, some see it as... A negative thing is an antichrist. Some see it as a positive thing as the early church. They're both possibilities. I wouldn't make a doctrine out of it. But if it was the early church, then the messianic movement in Israel is restoring that. And there's going to be a time of victory coming again. We read in Revelation 5, it said that the lion of the tribe of Judah 
has overcome. He overcame half 2,000 years ago when he got his salvation. And he's going to overcome the second half in these end times to overcome all the forces of evil and bring the kingdom. It is the lion of the tribe of Judah who will overcome. Amen. Do we believe that Jesus will overcome? Amen. Do we believe that he is a lion that will roar? Amen. And you know what the next line is? Do we believe he's the tribe of Judah? Let me ask you a question. How is the lion of the tribe of Judah going to overcome if there's no tribe of Judah? Hello? Are you listening? And there's got to be somebody in the tribe of, Jesus, of Judah who believes in him for him to be overcome. How can he overcome as the lion of the tribe of Judah if there aren't people of the tribe of Judah existing and people of the tribe of Judah who believe in him? It is a prerequisite for him to overcome that there will be a group of people from the tribe of Judah who believe in him. You've got to think about that a little bit, huh? So why do you think in every generation people have tried to, to wipe out the Jewish people? Because if you wipe out the Jewish people, Jesus can't win as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He can't be the lion of the tribe of Judah if there is no tribe of Judah. Hello. Are you thinking about that? You're not mad at me for saying that. So he wins. But this is what this battle is about. And that's what you're interceding about. For Jesus' victory. We, we're the, we're the, we of Jews, we're the more passive. You've got to pray for this to happen. And then, in Revelation 8 and 9, it says that our prayers will rise up in heaven like incense. The angels will turn our prayers into fire and cast them down upon the earth. Some people say we won't be here in the tribulation. Not only is that not true, not only are you going to be here, you're going to make it happen. It's your prayers and your prophecies that's going to make it happen. How else is it going to happen? And it says this, it's my last point, that you can be sealed in the power of the Holy Spirit. God said it twice, Revelation 7, 4 and Revelation 9, 4. He said, don't release the tribulation until the saints of God are sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be sealed if you're watching it in heaven. Hello. You need to be sealed to have protection, to be standing here in the midst of it so you won't get hurt. I'm not saying that we're going to be in the tribulation so you can be hurt. I'm saying you've got to be there so we can win the war in the middle of the tribulation. And God knows that. And so he's going to give you a seal of protection in the Holy Spirit. Right before we came over here, a couple of us, Abichai was with me. I don't know if you all was. We were praying with a dear friend of ours, an Israeli believer, an older man. And he, he has been a frontline soldier. He was in the 1967 war that captured Jerusalem. He was in the 1973 uh, uh, Yom Kippur war, the Day of Atonement war. And he was in the war of Lebanon. And we were praying about that and he began to weep. Big, strong, you know, frontline soldier. And he began to weep. And he said, he said, why did I survive? He said, I was on the front lines. I saw my friends getting blown up. I saw bombs going off next to me and my friends getting blown up next to me and it didn't touch me. And people got shot and died in my arms. He said, well, how could that have happened? And he was praying in compassion. But the answer to it is that we can be sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we have so many testimonies of Messianic Jewish soldiers in the Israeli army that bombs have gone off, missiles have gone off, bullets have gone by, by, and they just get supernaturally protected. And you need to get that seal. You need to get that seal right now. That same seal of the Holy Spirit will give you revelation, understanding, and anointing, but it will also protect you to be in the end times. The Bible says in, in Psalm 91 that a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. Has that happened? yet? Has it happened to anybody in history yet? It's never happened. Is it going to happen? 
Is it going to happen after Jesus comes back? No, that doesn't make any sense. It's going to happen sometime between now and when Jesus comes back. And I want us to get that seal. That nothing will be able to hurt us. And we will stand and prophesy unto nations. And by the blood of Jesus we will overcome the devil. And by our testimony that we love not our lives unto our death. We will be able to throw him down and overcome him. Hallelujah. That's enough. We're out of time. I want to pray for you. This is what I want to pray. Three prayers. Stand up. Put your Bibles away quickly. I want to pray for these. I want you to pray for you to become partners with us. That we will stand together in these battles. I want you to receive the revel revelatory anointing that Daniel had to write the book. We will have a revelation to fulfill it and prophesy it. And then lastly, I want you to have that seal of power that you will be those who will be protected so that you can prophesy in the end times. Do you want that? Listen, real quickly, let's just run up fast. I'm going to just to pray one prayer for you. Hallelujah. As close as you can, quickly. Amen.